Welcome to part two of palettes. Let's just get started right away. Let's talk about importing palettes. There are two reasons why you'd want to import a palette. The first being to re-import a palette that you may have deleted from your scene or to import the palette from a completely different scene. So let's re-import the text palette that I deleted um, a while back. So to do this, you'd go to the color view menu and go to palettes, import. Then from your browser window, you'd search through the directories for where you know the file is located. So for me, it's an original scene file palette library folder. I would click on the PLT file and then click open. So then you can rename um, your palette to whatever you like. I'll just keep it as that and say OK. And now I have my palette back with the, uh, the two colors that were in it before. But then if I'd like to import a palette from a completely different file, I would go through the same process. So palette, import, but then I would browse for that different scene. So I'm going to go into this climbing ink scene, go into the palette library and take this light as a feather palette and say OK. And so now I have a whole other list of colors from a completely different animate or animate pro scene. Okay, so now let's go back up to the element palettes. So say for example you have an element like you do in this scene, the rabbit clean layer, where you can only see the example palette when you are clicked on that layer. But then you run into a problem where you need to see this example palette in your entire scene. Well, you do this by linking your palette. So to link your palette, select it in from the palette list and then go up to the color view menu and select palettes link. So then you have to click on element because that is where this actual palette is saved in an element folder and then select that element which is the rabbit clean element or the rabbit clean layer. And then you have to select that palette from this list. In this case there's only one element palette for this element. Then down here is where you decide where you now want to link it. So it's already linked to the element palette list. Now we want to link it to the scene palette list. We want it to become available for the entire scene. So we'll keep that selected and then press OK. So now as you see, the example palette is not only available here in the element palette level, but also down here from the scene list. And I'll go into what this little icon means later on. I mean, it's pretty obvious that there's a bit of a warning there when you see a red circle and an exclamation mark. Um, that's basically giving you a warning because well, the original location of this palette is linked to an element or a layer. And if that layer gets deleted, then it, will, it won't be available for export. So it's giving you that warning right now just to let you know. So in Animate Pro, you not only have the ability to link uh, palettes within a scene, but you can link palettes externally. And the reason you'd like to do this is say you have multiple scenes. Um, say you have one scene per episode of an animated series. Well, if you load a palette, it's still only going to be local to that scene's folder. And then if you make changes, it'll only be changed within the individual scene that you're working in. But say you want to have a palette that's external to five different scenes, and if you change it in one Seen, it'll change through all five of those separate Animate Pro files. Well, you can do this, which is a pretty powerful tool. But let's create a master palette because normally you would create a master palette for a character for an animated series so that it's obvious that it belongs to all the scenes by being labeled master. So let's do that by creating a palette here and calling it Master Rabbit and saying OK. And then let me just quickly add a couple colors here. Um, let's change this to yellow and let's just say this is the skin. Another one. So pink for the ears. Uh, like a light blue for its G. What else was there? Say a gray for the belt, etc. So it's similar to the palette we already have for it. So we have something like that in our master palette. And then we have to actually go to our computer and create a directory for this PLT file. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Finder 
and I'm actually saving all these animate scenes in my folder animation pack 5 because it's the animate uh, video series tutorial pack 5. So where I'm going to create my, my directory is actually out here. I'm going to create it outside of the 5 uh, animate pro scenes I've created so far for this video tutorial. So I'm going to create a new folder and call it master palette. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this scene. Actually, I think I was supposed to have saved this first just to be sure that it's going to be in the program file. And then I'll go to my scenes palette library and I'll look for that master palette PLT and I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts controller command C to copy. Then I'm going to go back here and go into my master palette folder and paste this there, which is where it is now. So now it's outside of all five of these scenes. But then if I want to say link it to scene, let's create a new scene. So this is saved and we'll create a new scene and we're going to call it new. Now we can bring in that folder by going to the color view menu and going to palettes link to external. Then we're going to browse for that file that we just created. This one right here and say open and we want to link it at the scene level. You can also, once again, link it to a specific layer or at the element palette level and say OK. So now if we look at our scene list, we have our new, which obviously is the palette for this new scene, and the master rabbit scene. So as you may have noticed, there's a different icon beside the master rabbit palette and that's of a red circle, which is once again sort of a warning color and this time instead of an exclamation mark, there's sort of an arrow, the type of arrow you would see when you see directories, uh, directory folders linked one after the other. Um, what this is basically telling you is that this palette is not saved within the scene folder for this entire scene, which means that if this somehow gets moved, um, you'll bring any of the links that are associated with this palette. So all the colors, if they're filled in to a character here, will then turn the character red and it'll no longer have access to these colors. So it's sort of a warning to let you know about that. Um, the usual icon that you see next to a palette is generally a green circle with a check mark because not only is it saved in the scene folder for that scene, so if this scene gets moved around, for sure its palettes are going to go with it, um, it's also stored at the right level. Um, the fourth icon, which we haven't seen yet, is a green circle with a plus sign, and that's letting you know that you're still safe because your palette is saved within your scene folder, and it will always be moved around together, but that it's not linked at the right level. So for example, you might have it show up in your color view as being an element palette, but it might be saved at, say, the environment level. So those are the four palette linkage status icons that you might see. So the next thing I'd like to talk about is ordering palette lists. So let's go back to our palette scene. So let's go to File, Open Recent, and we'll go back to Palettes, and we're not going to save this scene here. We'll go back to the Rabbit Clean. We want to see both the color and the line art. So basically, Animate assigns the colors um, for an element um, that has multiple cloned uh, palettes uh, in a certain order, and that order is the order that it appears here in the scene palette list. So we clicked um, to see the colors of this rabbit, and it went right away to the rabbit, and not the rabbit knight or the rabbit clone, which are both clones. It, this one was just renamed to knight. And that's because, like I said, it appears at the top. But you can also reorder um, your, your cloned palettes so that as soon as you open your scene or you click on that character, it jumps to one of your cloned palettes instead. And you can do that in two ways. You can either use these arrows here, so we could bump, say, the clone palette to the top, which means it'll always go here unless otherwise selected, or you can actually use the menu here and go to palette move down and obviously if it's if it has the ability to move above up or down 
um, they'll become uh, ungraded and you know available to choose. So you can move it up or down. So I can move it down again, back to its original position. And now this rabbit palette is once again the default. So the last thing I'd like to talk to you about is how to use a color model from your scene as a palette source for future drawings. So to do this you need to open the model view. So go to Windows at the top and select model and the model window opens. So as you can see in the timeline view the rabbit cleans first drawing is selected. So if you go to the view menu at the top here you can choose use current drawing as model and this drawing will now be loaded as um, a palette source in the model view. So if you choose the brush tool from the tools toolbar here and then automatically the eyedropper is selected in the model view and you select a color, you can then use that color to draw in your view. And then obviously you can also choose other colors and then other color tools and, and paint and, and things like that. So it's, so it's a good way of having a palette um, visually accessible. So not just writing out nose, skin, you can actually just do it in a very visual manner. So there are other ways that you can load models. Um, the second one being import model, the view menu, or you can use this icon right here, import model. And this time I'm going to choose a model from a different scene. So I'm going to go back to where all my scenes are loaded. I'm going to advance painting and for my elements I'm going to choose the punching bag clean. And I'm going to select the TVG file, the Toon Boom vector graphic file associated with that drawing and open that up. So the drawing appears all red and the reason that is is because I also need to import its default palette. So to do this, I'm going to go to the color view menu and say palettes import and then browse for um, the proper palette. be the punching bag PLT. So I'm going to open that up and now as you see the colors, the proper colors appear. So the last way of importing um, a color model is through the library view. So let's bring this back up here and go to the library. And I'm just going to right click on this and say write to modify and that's the Animate Pro library. And I'm going to select the template I'd like to import and right click on it and say open as folder. Um, and I'm just going to expand this so you can see it. And actually expand it one more time. And then I know it's in the elements folder. You can't really read this here. So elements, I'm going to expand that. And then text. So I'm going to take the TVG, the Toon Boom vector graphic. You can even right click on it and say view thumbnail to be sure it's the right one and that's the one I'm looking for and then I can drag it into my model view so now I have this third color model that I can use um, whose palette I can use and you can use these two buttons at the top of the model window to scroll back through to your other uh, drawings and uh, the zoom obviously to zoom in and out um, and the last thing is that you can clear your model by going to the view menu and going to clear model or by using the delete key. Clear model. So then it disappears from your list. And then once you close this window, anything that was in here will not be saved. So you have to reload every time you open your scene. So that's it for the tutorial palettes. Stay tuned for the next tutorial from Pack 6.